Hi, I'm Jacob, an economist at the Reserve Bank of Australia. In this video, I'll take you through current economic conditions as of February 2025, covering developments in the Australian and global economies. I'll take a look at inflation, unemployment and economic growth, as well as monetary policy and the RBA board's decision to cut the cash rate at its February meeting. Let's start with inflation. The RBA's key priority is to keep price growth, or inflation, low and stable. To achieve this, we try to keep consumer price inflation between 2 and 3%. There are two measures of inflation that the RBA keeps a close eye on. Headline inflation, which captures the price of all goods and services in the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. This is the measure of inflation that the RBA targets. And then there's underlying inflation, which excludes unusually large positive and negative price changes for goods and services in the CPI. Underlying inflation gives us a better understanding of overall inflation trends because it means we can put aside one-off factors that might not tell us very much about the overall state of the economy. Focus on the black line. Headline inflation has continued to ease over 2024 to be within the 2-3% target range late last year. Some of this decline has been due to temporary government subsidies to households, including electricity rebates. You can see this in the purple bars. In late 2024, utilities prices were falling, while most other prices were rising. Trimmed mean inflation, which is one measure of underlying inflation, has also eased, and more quickly than expected a few months ago. But trimmed mean inflation remains higher than headline inflation, mostly because of the impact of the government subsidies to households. So the key takeaways here are, headline inflation has eased by more than underlying inflation, and headline inflation is expected to go back up again as the subsidies unwind before it falls again. Underlying inflation is forecast to return to the 2-3% range by March quarter 2025, and headline inflation is expected to return to the target range in the second half of 2026. Developments in the labour market are also important to watch, because maintaining full employment is a goal of the RBA and the Reserve Bank Board, alongside low and stable inflation. The labour market is strong, and expected to remain this way. But what do we mean by strong? A strong labour market is where the demand for workers from firms is high compared to the number of people available to work. In this graph, we have two measures of the strength of the labour market. The unemployment rate, which tracks people who are actively looking for a job but don't have one, and the underemployment rate, which tracks people who have a job but want to work more hours. Both unemployment and underemployment are lower than their average levels, indicating Australia's labour market is strong. We can also see in the graph that both measures declined or were basically unchanged in late 2024, whereas they had been increasing in 2023. That suggests that the labour market was gradually easing through 2023, but stabilised last year. The unemployment rate is expected to increase slightly this year, but to stabilise a little above 4% which is still very low compared to history. And the bank expects that Australia's strong jobs market will be supported by a pickup in economic growth over the next couple of years. So let's look more closely at economic growth. Australian GDP growth picked up a little in the September quarter of last year. We can see the components that make up GDP growth. If the components are above zero, they add to GDP growth, if they are below zero, they subtract from GDP growth. Private demand, which includes household spending and business investment, has been adding to GDP growth, but by less than the previous few years. Public demand, which is the direct economic activity arising from government spending, has also been adding. Net exports, which is exports minus imports, has been subtracting from GDP growth. Looking ahead, economic growth is expected to pick up over 2025 driven by a recovery in household spending, which you can see in the growing yellow bars. Public demand is also expected to support economic growth. However, as always, there are lots of uncertainties about the outlook. A prominent risk involves the extent of new tariffs and how the global economy will respond. But there are also domestic uncertainties, including whether the labour market's as strong as we think it is. Let's finish with an update on monetary policy. 
At its February meeting, the RBA board decided to cut the cash rate by 25 basis points to 4.1%. Prior to this meeting, the cash rate, Australia's official interest rate, had been on hold at 4.35% since November 2023. While the cash rate has been reduced, the RBA board assesses that monetary policy is still restrictive at 4.1%. There has been good progress on inflation, but the board remains cautious. In terms of future interest rate movements, the board will continue to look at the data and see if the economy and inflation continue to evolve as expected. That concludes our look at current economic conditions. For more student resources, visit our education page, links below in the description. Our next video will be published following the release of the May Statement on Monetary Policy. Thank you for watching.